Banzai! <laughs> we used to yell that all the time. Like at different sporting events and something would happen. <laughs> Banzai! <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome to User Friendly Episode... 70, 70? 67. 67. You're it's so, on the page right no, now. No, I'm not looking at it though. There it is. <laughs> Episode Budweiser the Buddy Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to User Friendly. I'm your host, Airphone Elijah, and I'm here with Roberto Oyos <laughs> from throwboy.com. Where are you from? Uh, Redmond. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> the bicycle capital of the world. I wonder if that, I'm sure that's got to be a website. Um, how are you, man? I'm great. And, and what's user friendly? Yeah, I was just gonna say, user friendly is our weekly podcast where we talk about our favorite stuff on the web, all things geek, and the tech that we love or hate. Mm. Oftentimes, the latter. True, true. <laughs> because that gives us some lulls. <laughs> uh, I'm great. I just came back from Portland for the weekend, and just an FYI, I have a feeling that in the next 15 minutes, my dog, whom I haven't seen. For come yapping in three days. Yeah. As soon as she sees me, first she's gonna pee a little bit. Uh. Actually, she probably won't do that because she doesn't <laughs> pee for me. But uh, for strangers, sometimes she pees, <laughs> and then she's gonna bolt over here. Yeah, and uh, try to uh, jump on my face. So when that happens, you can be ready for it. <clears throat> and uh, other than that, I'm doing great, man. It was a super busy week. Yeah, the dream of of the '90s is alive in Portland. The dream of the '90s is alive in Portland. You know what's so funny is if you've ever watched Portlandia, mm -hmm. it's almost ironic how accurate that show is. Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff that's there. Yeah. Uh, the dream of the '90s is alive in Portland. <laughs> like if you've been there, it really does feel in some of the neighborhoods like you're you're in the '90s. Yeah. Like all the outfits are the same. <laughs> and um, I don't know. They just really nail those the the different kind of stereotypes there. But I have like a few friends there that are like the hip, you know, twenty somethings, and they really nail those those types of people. In that I believe show. that. You know, to the point where none of those people want to watch that show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's just too it, it's it makes way them too mad. close to home. <laughs> they're just like, I don't even want to watch that show. It's just like, yeah, because you do the things that they're talking about. <laughs> when you go to a restaurant and you ask like what the chicken's name was, yeah, like, what was this chicken named? Did he I have like a good the, funeral? I like the two girls, two shirts. Have you seen that? Um, I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, they do a really funny thing about Kickstarter too, which is like perfectly accurate. Do you get IFC? Uh, no, I don't watch it on TV. Oh, you watch it on the internet? Yeah. Portlandia, for those that don't know, really funny show that just makes, I don't want to say fun, because it doesn't really, it pokes fun at the culture of Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Which is a, which is a city that <laughs> is only like three hours away from Seattle, so you can go there really quick and just like hang out. And uh, fun city. I really, I really love Portland. I think I could live in Portland. Uh, I'd have to, I'd have to get some gauges. I would never. I'd have to shave <laughs> like half my head, it's but over. only this side, and then I'd have to push it all over. Yeah. I'd have to get some really thick rim glasses. And you'd have to give up a career and just hang out. <laughs> just hang out. <laughs> all you do is hang out all day. <laughs> so great. <clears throat> anyway, I am still getting over a cold, so if you're coughing. Man. Does it linger that long for you it's, usually? No. This, or you're just not taking care of yourself? I think maybe I'm just working too much, <clears> but <throat> I, I have never had a cold last this long ever in my life. That sucks. It just like will not go away. But anyway, we've got a great show somewhat planned for you guys today. <laughs> just um, now. We just planned it just now. <laughs> and uh, let's start with uh, your Kickstarter stuff, though, because you finally launched it. Yeah. Woo! Kickstarter just launched. Oh, here we go. Here we oh, go. Hold okay. on, no. Hold Drum on. Drum roll. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, wait. There's new people here. Uh, uh, she's going to... She's going to... Oh, right. uh, <laughs> so, uh, your <clears throat> Kickstarter happened. You launched it on Friday. Friday morning. Seems to be going pretty well so far. Yes, it does. Um, here, I'll leave you to, to tend to your dog. <laughs> Penny! Okay, see, that's all she wanted. Look okay. that. Because, uh... We have other people here. She's like all interested in other people. That's kind of sad. <laughs> you really, you really let down. <laughs> um, <clears throat> for the audio listeners, he's actually crying right now. <laughs> Two tears fell from the same eye. Okay, she's back. Welcome <laughs> back, Penny. Welcome back. Hey, we're doing a show, so you gotta go hang out somewhere. 
Okay. Um, so it looks like it started really well. Yeah, yeah. It, it's off to a really great start. <coughs> um, for those that don't know, I'm doing a Kickstarter for Throwboy mm -hmm. to uh, raise funds to do a production run of our chat pillows. Mm -hmm. I brought one. Oh, cool, yeah. So you can see it. It's nice and fuzzy. Uh, yeah, they, they're they a new and improved like kind of take on the chat pillows that we've been mm -hmm. doing for a long time. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit bigger. Um, they're made with oh, this they are kind a little of bit bigger. Uh, softer material. Yeah. And what is this material called? It's called uh, verbola, Ver oh. velboa. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, basically if you have a plush toy at home, it's it's usually made out of this stuff, which is really cool because it's actually really resilient to mm -hmm. getting like all worn out. You know, it doesn't pill. Uh, either, it doesn't right? pill. Yeah. So um, I'm really I really like this stuff. Um, awesome. But we're doing the LOL, the OMG, and WTF mm -hmm. on the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Um, getting a lot of backer support, a lot of uh, buzz so far. Awesome. Um, and you can go to Kickstarter and just search Throwboy if you want to check out the Kickstarter there. Um, or if you want to remember the link, throwboy.com slash Kickstarter takes oh, you there too. that's way easier, yeah. Um, and you were on uh, Twitch today, right? Or uh, no, you were on... <clears throat> kind of. So what happened was, um, so like some of you guys know, I, I've been on Leo Laporte's show a couple times, mm -hmm. uh, different different show, tech shows that he does. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we know each other, like I, he has throwboy pillows in his studio and stuff of mm -hmm. like his Twit logo. And I was like, I really need to reach out to him and just kind of like let him know that, that I'm doing a Kickstarter for Throwboy. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know a good way to do it because I mean, I already been on his show for Throwboy. So and you weren't even, it wasn't even that long ago, yes. really. So I didn't want to be like, hey, can I be on your show again? Because mm -hmm. it's just going to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. Or basically like one long plug, right? So I was right. like, how do I do this? And um, he does a radio show in uh, the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Not the afternoon, kind of the morning. Oh, is it on Sundays? Uh, yeah. Oh, It's on Saturdays too. Um, so... Instead, what I did is I just surprised him by calling in as a radio caller. And so I called I called the show. And it's crazy because I haven't called a radio show since I was in, like, high school. Is it that easy to get connected to him? Uh, yeah, because he's on the radio. Yeah, but I feel like lots of people call radio stations and they just... Well, yeah, then let me get to that part. So, like, oh, okay. you know how calling... I would think that you call... Uh, and it would be like a phone tree or something, right? Or yeah. say like your number a hundred in line or something, or right? Or something, right? yeah. Busy signal, busy signal, busy signal, busy wow. signal. And I'm like, really? That's so like old school. Like you know, when you want to be caller number thirty to win the yeah, tickets. Yeah, right. And so I called him um, sixty times uh, this morning <laughs> to try to get through. Uh, <laughs> over and over, I was just doing stuff around the house. Yeah, sixty times. Mm -hmm. And and I was like. Hanging up, calling, hanging up, calling. Finally got through, and they were like, "Wow, well, Leo, what a like tech guy? What's your topic?" And I was like, "Um, I I'm launching a Kickstarter. I want to get Leo's opinion. Uh, or I want to get tips on launching a successful Kickstarter." And his call screener is like, "Oh, that's great, blah blah blah." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And, <laughs> and she, really? Yeah. Like that's a tech talk topic? Yeah. Well, because it's just like regular people that <clears throat> listen to talk radio, you know? Oh, okay. So it's like. You know, it's either answering my, like, computer questions or answering, like, my social media questions. So it's just kind of like the average every oh, man show. so it's not just about, like, I'm having a computer problem. It's that, too. You but know? it's all that stuff. Yeah. So I was like, dude, Kickstarter okay. is, like, it's still kind of a uh, unknown territory for a lot of people, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this will actually be a decent topic. He can explain Kickstarter. Right. You know. So um, I didn't want to be completely, like, a troll. So I was like, you know, hey, yeah. this will actually... Fit your show, you know. Right. Yeah. So I uh, I called and um, I waited on the line for uh, an hour and a half because <laughs> oh like because he has so many people in front of me and finally I was like <clears throat> the second to the last person to go on the show so I could have like actually not gone on at all and I pretended that I didn't that he you know we didn't know each other for a little bit and then he's like so did you launch your thing already and I was like yeah you can just go to Kickstarter and search Throwboy and he's like wait. <laughs> This Roberta, <laughs> and then he, he didn't piece. Oh, actually, never mind. I take that back. He didn't know it was you. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't. That's so great. All, all I said was, uh, "I'm I'm a big fan. I'm yeah. doing a Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and I want to get your uh, tips on doing a Kickstarter." So he went through and explained what Kickstarter was, mm -hmm. and then he uh, 
then he asked like what what you know what am i doing and then i told yeah. him yeah so that was kind of my plan i actually wrote it out because i was like okay i want to remember that i say the right things yeah because no, it's probably because when you get on the spot sometimes especially like you're live on the radio yeah you know? i'm like i don't want to screw this up by like talking too much so i just totally. kind of kept it short but um he was really cool about it and then i didn't i wasn't watching the video but they were saying they were holding up their pillows and, sh and like they were showing them on the video. Oh, there's feed. a video stream too? Yeah. Oh, cool. So that goes out as a podcast. Does he do that at the Twit Studios? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that goes out as a podcast. So, um, you know, when that is available, I will, I'll tweet that out. Awesome. Did you notice that you're... Yeah, I got immediate uh, response from it. So I got some backers just from yeah. doing that. Uh, so that was just kind of like my little guerrilla marketing way of getting on the show. Because I was like, there's no way I'm going to get on like as a guest again. <clears throat> but it still is like... They're still cool with me, you know. They still yeah, like right. what I do, but I just don't. Just showing you know. up in those kinds of ways. I mean, yeah. I mean, it go. It can take you so far if you're just like, I'm just gonna show up and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, that's how him and I met because I just brought a pillow to him like on his live show. Yeah. <laughs> so totally. That's our old relationship of <laughs> me popping in unannounced. That's funny. I mean, for um, for cult cast, I mean, the kind of like the idea started when I pretty much invited myself to see yes. Oh yeah. And I didn't even know Leander. For those of you <clears throat> that listen to cult cast, uh, one of the guys that's on with us is named Leander Caney. He's the British guy, and he we didn't even know each other that well. And I was like, I'm gonna go to <laughs> see yes. You know, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, do you guys maybe want to like meet up there or something? And somehow I ended up staying with him. He invited me to stay with him. Oh, that's because cool. they had extra space. So, and that's actually what, how you and I first started like mm -hmm. really hanging out too. And that's how um, when I went to South by Southwest, I didn't have a place. Oh no, <laughs> I great. had a couch yeah. surfing thing. Yeah, and then the. Then the guys from Daily Booth were like, "No, just stay with us," and that ended up getting me the connections to the whole thing that like led me to meet Leo and everything, you know. That's so. So crazy. yeah, you're right. It's just like about just going and doing it, you know. I wonder if that, I, like, like, I wonder if you were 40, if you'd still be able to do that same thing, because like, I feel like I don't, when it, I don't know, I don't think so though. I don't think so because I think you get kind of lazier, or or you think that you can kind of just use money to kind of, you know, grease the wheels. Whereas mm -hmm. this kind of stuff just kind of takes like guts to just go do it. You know? Not to mention, I feel like using money is fine, but one of the topics we talked about on last cult cast was, um, I was, I was like, why can't Samsung just take all this ridiculous money they're spending on marketing oh, yeah. and create a better phone? Yeah. Yeah. But after, after the episode was over, I, I was thinking about that and I was like, you know, Microsoft has all the money in the world. Yeah. And they still are unable to popularize their Windows 8 phone. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it really doesn't have anything to do with money. It's way more than that. I mean, money money can get you so far, but ultimately it, there's something else that has to be there. And, and money can help you, you know, popularize a product or an idea that is already good, mm -hmm. but it can't make a bad idea better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you're not you gonna sell a crappy product. product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, but. Um, I wonder if you if you were like older if, if it would be easy to like actually do that because no people would or like young people would really would be like uh, this old guy wants to stay with us right yeah you know true. like that's not gonna happen yeah I think it's more I don't know you kind of have a pass right you're yeah totally you seem like you're less intimidating <laughs> you're I probably guess. cuter too <laughs> yeah all right well hey um. <clears throat> We did something a little new uh, this episode. Well, we've done it before, but we're calling it Short and Tweet. Mm -hmm. The long segment where we answer your short questions. So we tweeted out literally two hours ago uh, <laughs> if anyone had any questions for us to answer mm -hmm. on the podcast. And we actually got a lot of questions, um, which is great because on Twitter on a Sunday night, that can be hard to do. So we thought we would just go through these and just fire off some answers to whatever questions you guys had. Yeah. So thank you. So thank you for sending those in. Let's start with Ben Peterman, who asks, hey, Airfon, should Apple make a home server? What do you think? Mm, like a media server? Yeah. No, I don't really. I mean, they. why would they really need it, though? You know, because you have the Apple TV that just acts mm -hmm. like a pipe to your television, right? Yeah, I think that maybe they were going that route with Apple TV when they first started. They were. Remember, it had a hard drive. But that was that. That's the difference between then and now, right? Yeah. Like most people don't have physical 
they, they don't have really everything stored on hard drives anymore. You know? Yeah, and Apple does not want you to store stuff on hard drives. They want you to stream everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think that's way too geeky of a thing for Apple to do. Like, <laughs> you know, like yeah, that's a that's a <coughs> hardcore super niche nerd type thing to do. Yeah, you know, yeah, what I mean? totally. Um, and no, I don't even have that. I have like a dumb TV set top box that streams Netflix. That's usually enough for the majority of people out there. I think that is. And then there's that niche that niche crowd that is probably yelling at the screen right now that downloads every single video, you know, rips yeah. all of their DVDs, <laughs> yeah. has ripped Blu-ray before to ho ho put it on their own hard drive. Yep. You know, I used to do that actually. And there's people that oh, are really forever. they're really hardcore about that. But that, yeah. let me tell you, man, that's not what normal people do. Yeah. That's too much work for the average Joe. It really and, is. And Apple appeals to the to the everyone. One, right they don't appeal to, I think, the, to the tech crowd i think that they they make their stuff approachable to people who are tech e but they don't they make their stuff user so user friendly that you know average people would be able to use it as well for the rest of us for the rest of them because us i think we probably are kind of like more up here <laughs> uh funny question from tyler schumacher considering the last question talk about anything but apple tv <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. The uh, he was. I think he was talking about the actual Apple Television. Uh, that's not getting traction again. Uh, traction again, is no, it? No, it's now. It's the. It's. I think we're going back to iWatch. So uh, Apple just announced their earnings call. Yeah, um, Man, well, earnings, I tried to listen to that. It's so boring. Uh, it's it's pretty dry. <laughs> and Tim Cook specifically made a comment about new Apple categories. Um, beginning 2014. So I think I think 2014 is going to be a really exciting year mm -hmm. for Apple. Dude, I hope so. I, I've, I've been making comments on Cultcast about how I feel like it's been boring and yeah. there's just not been very much Apple news. Yeah. And then we, I was doing some research and it's been 232 days. Well, by the time they do their press conference, WWDC, yeah. I mean their, I mean WW, WWDC, not a press conference. And that's in June. Right? June. Okay. By the time they do that, assuming they don't release any products between now and then, 232 days before they re <clears throat> release a product. And I don't even think they're going to announce a product at WWDC. They're going to they're going to talk about iOS 7 and they're going to talk about the new OS 10. Yeah. And that's going to be it. I don't I, think there's going to be any new products. I wonder who's going to do the presentation for iOS 7. I wonder if it's going to be Johnny Ive. It probably will be. That's actually that's actually a good point. Because you know every time it's for it was forestall, so now it's yeah. like who's gonna actually tell you how this works and what it's you you it know probably like, will what be what the features are and whatnot. Yeah, or they'll bring up some engineer. <clears throat> yeah, I mean he can speak. You know, uh, he's done it before, but not very often. He's probably spoke like I think he's a good speaker. And he's probably spoke like less than ten times, man. I don't know why they don't have him speak more. It must be because he doesn't want to. Yeah, because he's so relevant within Apple and everyone who's an Apple fan knows who he is. And I would say, aside from Steve Jobs, he was one of the best known personalities at Apple. Yeah. Responsible for their success. So yeah. why not have him speak? I mean, that's a different, That's those are two different things. Speak and do stuff. Yeah, right? but when you see him in the Apple like marketing videos yeah. whenever or commercials whenever a new product comes out, mm -hmm. he seems really articulate. I mean, he doesn't seem like a total doofus. Yeah. And he has a British accent, which makes him sound smarter. <laughs> I, I, it's always, um, <clears throat> like, I don't know, I always find it very odd when people equate Johnny Ive to being like, well, maybe he could be the next CEO. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? Why would, why would the head designer suddenly be the best market best manager and best guy for leading the company well, I think for the, the stockholders well I that think is the, the dumbest I, thing no i don't think it's that dumb i think it's because <laughs> steve jobs was a visionary and he was i mean he led with this type of charisma and i think that that is what people want to see at the head of apple like even if he's not making those strategic decisions because mm -hmm. not all the ceos make those i mean sometimes i think the ceo is it's a show pony position, you know? It's like, there's the workhorses and then there's the show ponies. And if you're charismatic, if you... But you do have the pull to do it, though. <clears throat> yeah. Right? So he could have the pull to lead the company down the toilet. You mean as CEO? Yeah. Yeah, I think, oh, well, of course. I mean, he has the pull to do that in his current position. Um, He's like, this is the new I man, the I move. I suppose. It's an iPod shaped like a move. I just Someone's think like, that, what? like... I don't want to buy that. It's a different story of <laughs> manager versus, 
you know, creative, right? Yeah. And just because, like, you're... So you think Steve Jobs was a good manager? Yeah. You don't I, see, so? I don't necessarily think that's true. You, you don't think that he, him stepping in had, like, him stepping in and leading Apple to success was just because he was Steve Jobs and he was charismatic? I think he was that, charming? I, no, he wasn't like, always he knew, charming. He knew how to lead people, right? Yeah, but I don't think that that's necessarily a that that's not necessarily a managerial role. Like, there's people who are good at management, and there's people who are good at vision. And I think Steve Jobs is really good at vision. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I think Tim Cook is more of a managerial type person. Like you see in his personality, he's much more reserved. He's not as as, as eccentric as Steve Jobs was, but he's probably super good at like controlling teams <clears> and mm -hmm. making sure things happen on a schedule. I don't know. I'm but that's totally different than, than like pushing things forward, right? Um, like, because you can't really equate. Because Tim Cook mm -hmm. has all these, he has all of the chess pieces already in place. He mm -hmm. just has to make them keep going, right? Yeah. And Steve Jobs had to create that. He had mm -hmm. to create the war plan, right? I don't know if he created the war plan or if he's like the war is in that direction. That's where we need to head. You create the plan and how we're gonna get there. Mm. Does that make sense? Okay. I don't know. Yeah. But um, it's just hard in general to um, compare these totally different types of people, um, or actually not even that. Just trying to compare somebody to Steve Jobs mm -hmm. is kind of stupid because it's like he has all these different traits that <coughs> that. Some of these guys have one of those traits, right? Yeah. You know, so. I think the biggest thing about Steve Jobs, which really helped him and is something that I would really struggle with, is he wasn't he wasn't afraid to be disliked. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he would do something that would just be treacherous mm -hmm. and if it meant, if it needed to be done. And even at the expense of, he may have been close to you and you felt like you were betrayed, mm -hmm. you know? And and he would still make that decision or or you know, carry out that action. Yeah. Whereas for me, that would be the hardest part because I think that like loyalty is important, you know, and, and you know, the people that are close to you, like you want to treat them well, yeah. you know, even if sometimes that means going along with something that you wouldn't otherwise go along with. Yeah, I understand. Um, let's talk about, okay, Jamie Harrison or Jamin Harrison, Jamin Harrison, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Uh, good question. So, we should probably mention before we talk about this, Tim Cook is having uh, a charity auction. Yeah. Well, he's participating in a charity auction. We talked about this on the last cult cast and you can bid for an hour of his time. Mm -hmm. And the bid started at zero. They thought it was gonna go for about 50,000. I checked earlier today, $600,000 <laughs> it's at. Where is it up? Can I see it? Yeah, so it's at charitybuzz.com. Uh -huh. And for $600,000, that's the current bid. There's 84 bids. Uh -huh. You get an hour of his time. Well, actually, between 30 minutes to an hour of his time. That doesn't include the plane tickets. That doesn't include anything. You have to get yourself there. You have to pay your own way. Right. You just get half an hour to 60 minutes of his time. I never heard of Charity Buzz. Is it, has it been I had popularized never, before I have now, never heard or? of it before now. It's and really there's 16 days left to bid. So with that, all, all that in mind, let's ask Jamin's question. Um, he wants to know, if we got to spend an hour with Tim Cook, yeah. uh, what would we ask him? You go first. This is a tough question. I've been thinking about this actually for a few days just because we were originally thinking about doing a Kickstarter. I was seriously considering it. <laughs> I was like, this would be amazing, right? Like, we'll, we'll raise, because the bid when we checked was at like 50K. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we might be able to get 50K. We possibly might be able to get 100K. Mm -hmm. We could do this, this would be awesome. But you know, now it's 600,000 bucks. So let's be <laughs> honest, the yeah. isn't that big. Yeah. Uh, so I've been thinking about it. I think for me, besides just enjoying his presence, which I really would just like to be around him because I think he looks like a nice guy. I would ask him what his, what his vision is for Apple and how his vision is different than Steve Jobs' vision for Apple. Because they're obviously two different people. Yeah. They've approached running the company in similar ways, but also in very different ways. For example, when that whole China thing blew up and everyone was like, oh my gosh, Apple is taking advantage of uh, these Chinese workers and they need to stop manufacturing things there. Like, like Tim, jo <laughs> Tim Jobs. <laughs> Tim, Tim Jong Tim Jong Jobs <laughs> went there. Tim Cook went there and 
visited the factory workers and his pictures taken with them and all that stuff. I can't imagine Steve Jobs would have ever done that. Yeah. He would have probably never gone there and just kind of like written the whole thing off as just, you know, marketing hype <laughs> yeah, or press hype. So that would be my question. Do you have something you want to add to that? Um, I don't know. I, I, like when you asked me that question, I didn't really have any good answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't really know what I would ask Tim Cook. Um, I don't think that I find him as intriguing as you do. Mm -hmm. So, I uh, no no comment. His favorite hot dog topping, maybe. Yeah, I'd spend six hundred thousand to be like. Uh, you know what this list is turning into? Favorite though? Ice cream? <laughs> this is turning into like this. It's like a circus now because so this this charity eight buzz thing is getting so much hype that now the people who are bidding on it. Don't even, I don't even know if they're trying to win. It's all like people who are promoting their products or website. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, dude, povely.com. Yeah, the, the, that's the, <laughs> instead of a name, it just says a, dom a domain. Yeah, name. it's just a domain name is the bidder. So let's go to povely.com. Oh, it's, an, it's just an app. It's an app. Like some crappy app. Povely Audio Bible? Really? <laughs> this, look, we should video that real quick. Where's my iPhone? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that makes me curious if they actually have the money. Do you well, think? yeah, I mean, I was actually like, Cause this looks like crap. <laughs> I was like, we should. Uh, let me go ahead. I just assume this. that the person that's gonna win is gonna be some like uh, guy from Nigeria, <laughs> Nigerian prince. Oh, I have very many monies to give <laughs> yeah. you. I just need you to pay toll. <laughs> I am, I am prince and king in my country. <laughs> so, Povely Audio Bible. Um, yeah, that's kind of enough. There's like nothing there. <laughs> it's only got, well, I guess it's current ratings, a three Seven and a half ratings. star review. Um, so that's what it's being used for now is people are just promoting their product. I did hear that for a while anyway, the top bidder was, um, the owner of OWC of the world computing, uh, which is yeah. like one of those major, like mm -hmm. third party, like Mac accessory manufacturers and websites yeah they well it's weird because they have like people that talk to apple people yeah you know? totally but the thing is is like whoever wins this i mean you're gonna go talk to tim cook he's not gonna tell you anything yeah exactly i mean he's gonna be cordial with you he's gonna be like thanks for the money he's not gonna give you like any apple secrets he's not gonna re reveal the roadmap to you no. it's like you're not gonna learn anything strategic from exactly. him. exactly that's exactly why I, I can't really get my head around like well, I don't well, care. Well, now it's just like because. Marketing. Well, I mean, even if it was like a small bit, it's like it would. You would use it for marketing. <coughs> you know what I mean? Like I would. Every, yeah, everybody would. Yeah, I would. Like you know, I even considered you, when it was lower. I was like, there's 20 days left. I was thinking I should put a bid on this just so people will see Cultcast and search for it. Yeah, that's the only reason I was considering doing it after the after I realized there's no way that Kickstarter would raise the money that we needed because uh -huh. there's still 15 days left. This is this is probably gonna go over a million bucks. Well, we will see. Let's we'll see. We'll check here. back next week. Um, okay. What's that? All right. So, big question. We hear this a lot. People want to know about um, I the next iOS. So, uh, Zhang Fui Fa. I like that name, Mr. Fa. Mm -hmm. uh, makes me want to go. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> no, nobody else. Mm. Uh, just me. That's okay. <laughs> uh, the new radical facelift of iOS. That's what he's asking about. And then also Ad Adam Prokupchuk. Pro Pro yeah. Adam, I've said your name before, and I'm sorry that I just took a cleaver <laughs> to it yet again. Porkchop. Pro, pro, he's pro pork chop. <laughs> so he's really, I love pork chops, so, so I get that. He wants to hear our opinions on iOS 7. So let me just put this out there. Mm hmm. We don't know anything. There's no iOS 7 yet, guys. Well, what, what are we supposed to say? It's, well, no, this is here. Here's the thing. And, and okay. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about the fact that we don't know anything about iOS 7. We hardly know anything about the next iPhone. We hardly know anything about the next iPad. Yeah. And I'm going to take it back to when Tim Cook said, we're going to double down on secrecy, y'all. Mm, good. Remember? Good one, and yeah. everyone was like, after, immediately after, there was no doubling down. We were learning all this stuff about new Apple products. Mm hmm. And everyone was complaining to me, oh my gosh, dude, look, this is hilarious. He said that, and we're learning all this stuff. But now look at it. We know nothing. I mean, yeah. iOS, the only thing we know about iOS 7 is all speculative. It's, it's things that we've seen or just thought up because we found out that, you know, Johnny I was taking over 
like the software. Oh yeah, it's group. all speculation. That's all we know. Yeah. Nobody knows anything from all the different sources that I that I've talked to, all the people that I've read that know about these topics. No one knows anything. It's going to be totally brand new when yeah. it's revealed at WWDC. Same with the next OSS 10. OSS 10. OS, OS 10. 10. Nobody knows anything about that either, except for some beta stuff, minor beta stuff here and there. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, we can't really say until we see a developer preview. Yeah. Um, we are expecting um, a new facelift, of course, because Johnny Ive is taking over the looks of iOS 7. Right. Um, it, I think if, you are, if you're using the podcast app, that's going to be a great indicator of what we should expect because those those two tape reels that I used to like yeah. disappeared. The app's much cleaner now, um, much more basic in its look and functionality and its UI. And I think that that sweeping change is coming across the entire um, OS. I'm not so crazy about this um, new um, trend towards flat iconography. I don't really like it. Very you know, much. I'm not sure I like it either. It's kind of like it just reminds me of like street signs. You know, just very basic, like yeah. thick outlines, like street signs. You know, yeah. Like they have a thick outline around it, and then they have like a uh, something that symbolizes what's in the middle. You know, it's that's, just like that's where we're gonna end up. That's just really boring street to me. Signs. Like, I mean, when <clears throat> I, I don't. I feel like we're getting swayed into thinking that we're tired of what icons look like, you know? Like mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like now what are the tech blogs talking about? Oh, skeuomorphism sucks. Let's just harp on that like crazy, you know? I never had a problem with skeuomorphism. I had a I had a problem with bad skeuomorphism. Yeah. Like I thought the skeuomorphic stuff that they put into the podcast app was good. Mm -hmm. But the stuff they put into the calendar app was really bad. Mm -hmm. It just didn't make any sense. It was way 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 outdated. That whole like paper calendar thing. I mean, we haven't used those in years. Yeah. Not to mention, do you know like w w when you have a spiral brand bound notebook, and like like the spiral part would stay inside the notebook. Yeah. Did that ever bother you? Like when you ripped the page out, so you wanted to like go through and yeah, pull. Yeah. That bugged me too. <laughs> and on the calendar app, there was like those torn pages those up there, in there yeah. and I was like, you can't get rid of them. <laughs> and for those of us who are slightly OCD in those areas, it's like it just annoys me every time I see it. Yeah, so I, I think that off really there's fast. a balance too. I think they went a little bit overboard with those kind of weird details. Even even to a certain extent, um, iBooks on the iPad where you go like that, you know? Yeah. That's just a little kind of like that was that was like it looked cool in a video, you know. You mean when they were flipping the pages? When they flipped pages, yeah, yeah right. thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think that was just like when the iPad was coming out. I was like, oh, that looks really cool, you know, because. That's how books work, you know? But now it's like, does that even need to be? The Kindle doesn't work that way, you know? Yeah, um, I don't think it does. That's just sort of like Apple trying to put their touch on, like, look how much attention to detail we do. Yeah. But there's a difference between that kind of attention to detail and doing something like Expose where instead of it just all of a sudden the windows are, are separated, it mm -hmm. actually goes like that, right? So like that kind of thing, you're not even listening. Now. I am listening to everything that you're saying. Sorry, go ahead. But you know how like when when OS X came out, yeah, they were being praised for their attention to detail for things like expose, right? Mm -hmm. I love expose. Because I mean, like expo, they didn't have to include that slow motion mode, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? You wait. You mean like there's a mode where everything's actually like go out slowly? Yeah. Hold down shift and press that button. Oh, I've never even seen that before. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Like that actually makes sense because you see where things are going. Oh, you know? right. Yeah, because I always just go like that. Rather than uh, interesting. Rather than a page flip. That's just kind of like esoteric, I guess. It's a little yeah, bit, it's kind of sure. like whatever. You yeah, know? Yeah. Right. Um. So I don't know. I I'm not a big fan of going like the whole left way with with everything being clean and simple. You know, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I think we need a little bit of jazz in, in some of the stuff that we do. You know, like some of the icons and some of the the UIs, you know, UIs aren't instantly better because they're simple, you know? Yeah, it doesn't, I, d I definitely hear what you're saying. And I hope we don't get to this, like, like this sterile, yeah. utilitarian, you know, like, set of a software that just kind of looks like you're living in the year 3000. Yeah, I think designers are pushing that, though. I think that, like, well, or at least, like, it, the tech designers, <coughs> the, the um, designers that I've seen on Twitter are, like, really have a huge boner for like that kind of iconography Swing. and it's just like i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm out of touch but i just don't think it's that cool um let me see here i think that's it oh no we got um we've got uh, a suggestion to watch the buddy cup budweiser yeah. commercial i want to watch that so we should unless we have another one um 
a lot of these are actually about, oh, hey, we're going to give James Adams oh, yeah. a user-friendly shout. There we go. Hey, cool. Hey, and actually, so uh, we should read his review, too, because he, he left us a review on the UK iTunes store. Yes. And, so um, thank you guys for doing that. We rarely see those. I sent you an email. I saw All that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have it somewhere. So we'll start reading those as well. So thank you. If you're leaving us a review on iTunes that's not in the U.S. store, mm -hmm. that's great. Because did, how did you view that? Um, one of our fans sent me all those. Oh, awesome. Because um, we can't view them without somebody sending them to us, I don't think. Uh, no, we Unless can't. Unless we like, get a UK email address and I... sign in. It might be hard for me to find who can. Okay, well, let me just read this while you're doing this. So, um, thank you, James Adams, Colt Cast, <laughs> Colt Cast Shout, <laughs> UF Shout, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, setting, us, or setting up this review for us. He says, insanely great, two normal tech dudes... Speaking about the wide world of tech, brilliant podcast, have to have a chuckle to and is informative. Um, Airfon, <laughs> I love that he spelt your name Roberto, E-R, <laughs> Roberto, share their views on tech and everything geek. Airfon, your dog is insanely cute. <laughs> Thank you. Do you guys remember that episode where she popped her head up <laughs> and looked around and then popped her head back down and then it came up and she was attacking her own claw? Uh, and then the best part was, is like when she disappeared and then came back up and she was still fighting it. Oh, dude, I was dying. It's so funny because you guys, CG. you guys were tweeting me about that. For those of you that saw that. And I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> I thought maybe she came up on my lap and you guys were like, oh, it was funny when she did that. So I had to rewatch that scene and I was dying laughing. It was so funny. She's um, a com comedian. Sorry, I can't find your name, but thank you for sending me all of those. Um, oh, yeah. Dang it. I feel bad. We'll, we'll bring it, him up. It's in your email. Yeah, but just, dude, I got a zillion emails. Yeah, but write my name and it'll be the last thing I sent you. Oh, let's see here. Roberto. Roberto. There it is. There it is. There is is it? There it is. Fantastic. Oh, all right. Jeremy, thank you. Um, he screenshot Jeremy. Everything. Jeremy Angel. Yeah. I wonder if there's any relation to Chris Angel. So, hey, should we leave, should we read one more of these? Yeah, let's do another. And you have to do it in a British accent. Um, okay. I'll do my best British accent, which is the worst. Is you know is the best British accent that's out there. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, I'm trying to find a good one. Let's just do this one by Blake Hawksworth. How a tech podcast should be, <laughs> Governor. <laughs> a tech podcast shouldn't be a bore about news and other irrelevant pieces. <laughs> you guys tell current, topical, and useful news, but do it in a way that doesn't make me fall asleep at my desk, but makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> laugh out loud. <laughs> leading, leading weird stares to ensue. Top work, governors. Keep it just the way you are. Also, love for the... Much love for the cult cast. Cheerio! <laughs> you embellished a tad. But... No, I read that as accurately as I'm sure. He was probably saying it just the way I did as he was typing it out. And this is Cheerio, like Dickens. Dickens. Yeah. <laughs> and then he put another coal on the fire. <laughs> to warm his hands, he did. We send <clears throat> him our podcast uh, via like quill. <laughs> yeah, right. We have it transcribed <laughs> by our serfs. <laughs> Send it to him via pigeon. <laughs> so uh, okay, and we, we have one more topic. Oh, let's wrap yeah, up. Yeah, let's this. wrap up with our last topic, and it is about tech and beer. Tech so and beer. All of the comparisons to our show to Dignation will continue. Oh, good. No, we haven't heard any of those in a while. <laughs> it's because Dignation's like three years old. <laughs> no one even remembers what Dignation <laughs> is anymore. Kevin Rose just. Making that money. All right, ready? Yeah. All right. No. no. Dude, it was on video mode. It must <laughs> It must automatically go back. All right, here we go. We've never seen this. We've never seen this. This was sent to us by, we'll read his name in just a sec. For years, we've been making friends in the same way. Oh my God. <laughs> now, toasting has received an upgrade. Budweiser presents the Buddy Cup, a cup integrated with Facebook. 
<laughs> no way. <coughs> when two people clinked their cups, they became friends. <laughs> don't clink me. <laughs> Ew, don't clink my person uh, that uh, uh, would connect their Facebook profile with the cup's chip. This has got to be fake. They just did the same as always. Went out drinking bud and making new friends. <laughs> you go home and you have time to like Facebook request. <laughs> this has got to be fake. <laughs> I like how they showed a guy soldering the cup. Yeah. I'm sure that happened. Buddy cup. The more buds, the more friends. That's hysterical. That is, I told this you. This has got to be fake. I told you it seemed like the tug toner, right? Because it's just so like out there. It's absolutely bizarre. And there's no freaking comments? And this is Budweiser's official? They, they had to have shown off. Oh, Brazil official. Oh, uh, they had to have turned off comments. Is it? No. That that would, that would wouldn't even let you do anything. Oh. Um, It's not on April for, it's not on April Fool's Day. No, it's not. When did this come out? The 24th, a couple days ago. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow, so Airphone, what do you think about the Budweiser Buddy Cup? Because when you go out drinking all night, <laughs> what you what you want is to be forever connected with all the drunk people that you thought were cool yeah. that night, especially that girl that you thought was really cute. Yeah. And then you realize that she looks like a racehorse. She looks like this. <laughs> yeah. she, it, she looks exactly like Admiral Akbar. <laughs> In the in the in the light of the sun, <laughs> and she's like, "We're friends now. <laughs> I love you." You're like, "Yo, your tongue doesn't even go back in your mouth ever." <laughs> How do you keep it moist like that? <laughs> you think it would get dry, and now she's your Facebook friend. Yeah. <laughs> she's seen your. Uh... And she knows your address. Yeah. And she has your phone number now. And she has your phone number, and she knows what your mom looks like. She's, she's probably gotten a hold of her she as well. Sent her, she sent you a gift and her a gift as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She sent you a Facebook sticker already. Wow. This, if this is real, this is the worst idea in the history of technology. Except this is totally a stupid Kickstarter, right? This is totally yeah. a stupid and funded Kickstarter, is it not? You mean like you think that if they released this that people would pay for it? No, yeah, yeah. I think that this this dumbass thing would have gotten featured on Kickstarter, and it would have like took off in the tech it industry. Made, like, it makes like nine million dollars. It would have been like all over every tech <coughs> blog, right? Yeah, it, it really would have actually. That's true. I mean, it's a very novel idea, but I just remember my my drinking days of which I had some. Mm -hmm. And you no know uh, longer drink. <laughs> no, I drink. I just don't go out to bars and. You know, go crazy that often. I say that for CES <laughs> when the nerds unite, and then I just get totally buck wild. But I don't know. I wouldn't want to be friends with people that I just like. You don't even know anyone. You can't even hear anyone when you're at a bar. Yeah. You know, and not to mention, like, what if you just saw a cute girl, yeah. right? And some total creeper just goes up to her and just bumps her cup. <laughs> yeah. Now we can go on your Facebook profile. <laughs> And look at those pictures of you in your bathing suit, and he knows your address. You know, it's like, you have to accept them, though, right? I don't know. Do you? <laughs> uh, you probably do. What does you the girl think to... of this? I didn't even think of that until you just said that it would totally happen. Like, just like, like pass by. Yeah, you just totally like stealth bump. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, whoops. Oh man, now I know where you live, and I'll be there. You go. It's like, okay, this is what he's doing. Get your cup. You be the girl. <laughs> I'm so happy you guys. Uh, oh, oh my god! Sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> That's what the, what the noises girls make, by the way. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> As you can tell, I used to hang out with a lot of ladies. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So no. I hope this is real. Oh, I want one, by the way. I want one, too. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm going to carry it around with me everywhere I go and just... If you're watching bump. Budweiser, send it to... Send, it, send us a couple of buds. User-friendly care of this Airfun buds. and Roberto, uh, P.O. Box. Uh, 572... New York, New York. 100th <laughs> Avenue, West Street <laughs> Avenue. You don't need streets in a P.O. Box, Airfun. Hey, you get your own P.O. Box... <laughs> And then you can tell me what the address is, dog. <laughs> I think that's all we got. I think you're right. So, um, successful segment 
Yes, that was called Short and Tweet. Short and Tweet, the long segment where we answer your short questions. Good the job. long segment. That's actually a whole other segment, actually, <laughs> that we don't do on this show. That one's called All Week Schlong. That's U <laughs> UF After Hours. <laughs> <laughs> the schlongest episode you'll ever... That's not going yeah, anywhere good. Yeah, okay. okay, cool. So, hey, if we wanted to learn more about your Kickstarter or just... Um, me in general. Your as address. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can find me on Twitter. It's just at Roberto Hoyos, R O B E R T O H O I O S, and on Throwboy uh, or Throwboy.com for everything else. What about you? Fantastic. I'm at Airfon, E R F O N, and uh, you can always catch me on the Cultcast, thecultcast.com, in case you're not familiar with that uh, podcast. And then also, you can subscribe to this show if you are watching through Blip TV and maybe you're like, who are these two schmoes that nobody knows? Mm -hmm. See what I did there? Yeah. You can subscribe to these episodes on uh, iTunes. That way you don't have to go and seek them out. They'll just show up on your iDevice or Android device or whatever you have. And uh, there's a video and an audio version now. So yes. if you're listening to the audio version, would you let us know? And let us know what you think. Um, we, well, we unless they only want to leave it one star. Unless you want to only leave it one star, in yeah. which case... It's called The Verge. It's called The Verge Audio Cast. <laughs> <laughs> you should go there and leave it there. We have a lot of one stars. Doesn't hurt our feelings. <laughs> Just go leave on The Verge. <laughs> I want people to start doing that. That would be so funny. You know what's funny is like we keep pushing that eventually. And they'll start doing it. Eventually somebody will probably do it not knowing that we're not just like joking. Yeah. But also the eventually Verge like the Verge, the Verge is going to find out that we're doing this. And he does it on his other show. No, no. Time. They'll probably think it's funny. Yeah. They'll probably think it's funny. Um, but and then you can also find us on YouTube. You can watch a stream there or just uh, stream it there. It's, yeah, that's uh, right. YouTube.com slash user friendly show. Mm -hmm. User friendly show.com for everything. For all your user and friendly needs. Yep. So, oh man. <laughs> I love Steve I wish Ballmer. I didn't see that. <laughs> I just distracted him with a Steve Ballmer gif um, animated. Let's just say it was that. I think that's all we got. <laughs> Yeah, well. Thanks for watch or watching user-friendly or listening to user-friendly. Uh, we'll be back next week with another episode. Keep it friendly. Keep it friendly until next time. <laughs> <laughs>